الله تعالى نحمده سبحانه نستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم أما بعد أشهد أن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي وأفضل الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله تعالى من عذابه من النار Begin by praising Allah the most high, the most exalted, the most merciful, the most magnificent We testify to his oneness and greatness We testify to the prophethood of his most beloved Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib, the man sent to guide and care for mankind until the end of time. We ask Allah Azza wa to bless him, his family, and his community, and to allow us to be gathered with him on the day where we will meet him and drink from his beloved hands. Salawat wa rabbi wa salam wa alayhi. My brothers and sisters, there is a nature that every Muslim has uh, of wanting to make change. SubhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, it's created most Muslims or all Muslims with something very unique That when they see something that's wrong or they see something that's, that, that needs to be fixed That they're very intrinsically wired to do something about it They want to do something about it And subhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal by His grace and His bounties Has given us really two main ways that we can make change Or we can truly impact the society or the world around us The first of them is physically we can physically do things to please Allah Azza wa to make change, to make impact, to change the circumstances around us in any way, shape, or form that they need to be. And the second way that Allah Azza wa has blessed us with, and maybe there's many others, but the second main way 
is by having or giving something that is very pr prized to us. It's very valuable. And that's our money. That's our wealth, our property. The things that we own or we think that we own that we give for the sake of Allah to make change. And making change, like I mentioned, is something that we all, it, it makes all humans, whether they're Muslim or not, whether they're good or not, change makes people feel good about themselves. Bringing things that are better makes people feel better about themselves. So today, inshallah ta'ala, I want to tell you, begin by telling you a story of a man that one day he was so sincere, he was so inspired, he was so invigorated to make change that he went out and he said the only change that he could, he couldn't do something physically, but Allah blessed him with something else. And that was wealth. So he, he went out and he said, لَأَتَصَدَّقَنَّ بِصَدَقَ I'm going to go out today and I'm going to give some charity. I'm going to give some of my money in charity to somebody that needs it. So he goes out late at night, really can't recognize who people are. He walks up to somebody and he puts money in his hand. A lot of money and amount of money, we're not sure, but we're assuming that he gave something very significant. In the morning, the people woke up and the town woke up, this small town, and everybody started talking. It was as if it was on the front page of the newspaper. And everybody's tweeting and texting about it. Yesterday, they, they, they woke, the people woke up and they said, yesterday, someone gave sadaqah to a sarak, a thief. Who would give money to a thief? Who would give money to this man that everybody knows is a thief? Who gave charity to a thief? And the people were talking and discussing it and so much propaganda about who would do such a bad thing. So the next day, the man, he felt slight, he felt bad about how can I give money to a thief? So he woke up the next day and he said, لا تصدقنّ بصدق. I'm gonna give charity today. So he goes out and late at night doesn't see people who people are and he puts a significant amount of money in some person's hand. He wakes up the next morning and the people are saying that a money, sadaqa, was given to a zaniya, a prostitute, a woman that sells herself for money. And the people are saying, who would give charity to a prostitute? Who would do such an outrageous thing to give charity to a prostitute? So the man, he felt so bad. He felt as if, what am I doing? What is going on? So he said, the next day, same thing. Today, I'm going to go out and I'm going to give some charity. So he walks up again late at night. No one can't recognize anybody. And he puts a amount of money in somebody's hand. And he walks away. They wake up in the morning and he finds out that all the people know or found out that he gave money to a rich man. A man that had plenty of money, but he got the money. SubhanAllah, this is a beautiful hadith of the Prophet in the books of Imam Bukhari and he mentions or, uh, it's an important lesson for us to take in trying to make change. Sometimes, SubhanAllah, we're so sincere, we really want to do something that's good. And you see that the circumstances around us are not really fulfilling what we want. Case study of this hadith. You know, where do you find in a community that there's lots of thieves and there's lots of prostitutes and there's people with money walking around not doing anything about it. Because what's the random chance of a man walking in the street and just seeing somebody that's a thief? Unless the community has plenty of people that are stealing money. Or people, a community that has plenty of women that are walking around selling themselves to men. But the randomness of such an act shows that there most likely there's so many people in this community and who doesn't do anything about it? The rich man that has plenty of money, that sees the circumstances around him, and he doesn't do anything about it. See, the, the lesson here, one of the lessons of this story is that making change by giving charity, making change by giving money, sometimes those that are so sincere and they really want to do it, they are so willing to give it. And sometimes those that really have an opportunity to give in charity and make not little impact, that make major impact, they choose not to give. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ There is not a day, illa, except two angels, illa malakani yanzilani They come down, two angels, every single day, to every single human. And they go up to him, and they ask, has he given in charity today? And if the answer is yes, the angels make dua and they say, Allahumma ati munfiqan khalafa. 
Oh Allah, give this one that is giving in charity, that is trying to make change, that's trying to make himself change or society better or whatever have you. Oh Allah, give this man more. And at the same time, the Prophet ﷺ said that these two angels, they go to people who are not giving anything. They have money because he is holding it back. Allahumma ati mumsikan talafa. Oh Allah, destroy the one who has but holds back because he is the reason that there is corruption in society, that there's ills in society, that the society is breaking down. So subhanAllah, we always learn, and this is the, 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 the main aspect of today's khutbah, is we always learn that charity is something very individual and personal. And in this, subhanAllah, we learn so many things, so many benefits, how charity makes our lives better by erasing sin, by allowing us to make more money, by allowing us to increase in knowledge, by allowing us to have a better reward or bank account in the akhirah. We learn so much about how charity makes us personally better. But when it comes to society, charity is the main function or one of the main functions in changing the dynamics of the society, of the way people act, of the way people are, of the way the nature of our community can be or could be or is not. Just charity. And subhanAllah, the beauty that the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Salawatu Rabbi Salam Ali, that's the beauty and he says that whoever gives in money, this is, whoever spends in his money in charity, this is truly the investment that he is making. SubhanAllah, it's not only an investment in ourselves, but it's investment in the world around us. And the 2.5%, of course, there are different levels of charity, but the obligatory 2.5% that every Muslim that has a certain amount of money needs to give, if all of the people around the world, they just gave that amount, we will really reconsider the idea of, would people be hungry? Would people not have clothing or jackets in the winter? Would people be really living under oppressive societies or have injustices going on? Would the dynamics of the world change if those that had money gave a little from what they had to change the reality of the world that they live in? And the answer is, absolutely. The, the reality of sadaqah, the great goal of sadaqah is not just for our personal gain, but to change the world around us. And so today, inshallah my, my intention is not to talk about the importance of charity so much, but in how we can make the most impactful change with our charity. See, when you talk to a businessman or an investor, or you talk to an average person like me yesterday with my wife, when we were talking about investing in a business, or we talk about investing in a stock, or whatever you want to invest in, when you go up to a businessman or a person that wants to make some money, you tell them, okay, take some of what you have and put it into something that will make you lose all your money. No, nobody would make such an investment. That if I put a thousand dollars in, I'll lose that thousand and I'll make nothing. Nobody makes such an investment. Nobody even is willing to like the idea of, wallahi, I'll buy a house for 300,000 and in 50 years, it'll still be 300,000. Like, man, what kind of investment is that? I don't want to make that kind of investment. I want to make on my investment. I want to make on what I give. I want to see impact with what I do with that money that I'm going to invest. This impact, my brothers and sisters, this charity of how, this ch charity that we can give, whatever it's little or a lot, how do we maximize impact? How do we maximize effect? How do we maximize change in the society around us? And subhanAllah, I only refer back to the beautiful teachings of our beloved Prophet Wasallam And the sunnah, this amazing lessons, deep, deeply entrenched in the teachings of the Prophet Wasallam that teach us how to make major impact. And you know, you go back to the, studying the life of the Prophet Wasallam and you, you, you see that he was a man that was actually from a materialistic realm, especially in the beginning of his call. He had very little. He didn't have much money, much power, much influence. He didn't have much of it. But there was an investment that he made. There was an effort that he put. All the money, all the efforts, everything, the time, the energy, the effort, all of it was put on something that he was able to guarantee amazing, rewards on that investment. 
What do I mean? Let's look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ very early in Mecca. One day Khabbab al-Arat radiallahu anhu, a slave, a man that was a slave to, the, to, to some of the pagans, and he was being tortured and oppressed. And he comes to the Prophet ﷺ one day, and he says, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of God, Id'u lana. Why don't you make dua for us? Why don't you raise your hands to Allah and tell Him to change our circumstance? The torture and the oppression and the persecution. Just raise your hands, Allah will help you. So the Prophet ﷺ was sleeping and he got up, salawatu rabbi wa and he looked at the man, this young man, Khabbab, and he was angry. And he told him, famous hadith that we've all kind of heard, the people that came before you, they went through so much more torture, so much more oppression, and you are too hasten. You are, you want to hasten the process. For Allah, I swear by Allah, Allah will give aid to this deen, this way of life. Until a man can walk with his animals between or in a part of Yemen that is the most dangerous, the most thieves, the most robbers, the most crimes that take place. He will walk in that area between Sama and Hadramaut and he will fear no one but Allah. So how can you guarantee such a thing, Ya Rasulullah? How, how do you know? I understand the... How can you guarantee such a reward on an investment? What are you investing in? Second story. We mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. When the Prophet ﷺ is essentially a fugitive, leaving Medina and going to Mecca. And he has... He's the most wanted terrorist in the world. And he has a hundred camels, a hundred million dollars you can imagine as a bounty, and he gets caught by Suraka bin Malik. We mentioned the story just a couple of weeks. And he tells Suraka, let me go, and I guarantee you the bracelets of the Persian emperor. How can you guarantee such an investment? How can you guarantee such a return on your investment? Ya Rasulullah, what is it? Third story. We'll end with this, the first part of the khutbah. Ya Rasulullah, you are fifth year after migration. You are in the most difficult circumstance that the Muslims have ever been in. The, the, all of the Arab tribes have combined to besiege you or surround you and come and destroy you in Medina. Your allies have betrayed you in Medina, the Jewish tribes of Medina. And you are left for nobody to fend for you except this few hundred that you have to defend. Few hundred. And yet the Prophet ﷺ, as he's digging the trench in Al-Khandaq, he takes the pickaxe and he slams the board, boulder and he says, I see the Persians of the Romans opening up. I see the emperor of the Romans, the empire of the Romans opening up. I see the emperor, empire of the Persians opening up. I see the empire of Abyssinia opening up for my ummah. How can you guarantee such an investment, Ya Rasulullah? What did you invest your charity in? What did you invest your money in? What did you invest your time and your wealth and your time in? We'll find that out in the second part of the khutbah. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ لِهَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِيُلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ الْغَفُرُ اللَّهِ بسم الله والحمد لله صلاة سلام على رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. What was it that was so amazing that was so valuable that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had such yaqeen such certainty in this investment and its reaps and its rewards. That at the most difficult stages of his life, he was able not only to inspire himself, but everybody that's around him with such amazing dreams and goals. What was it? What was it? Was it a bunch of money that he was going to own? Was it a bunch of buildings? Was it this huge army that he was going to invest in? What was it that changed the game of the reality of the Muslims? From his time, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, until I time, what was the investment 
It was, as Allah Azza wa Jal says, هو الذي أيدك بنصره He is the one, of course Allah Azza wa Jal, first and foremost, the ultimate source of power and ability and will. Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that gave you aid. Allah is the one that gave you power. Allah is the one that gave you ability and gave you victory. وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ And the believing men and the believing women. It was the people that the Prophet built. It was the people that he invested in. Those hundred or hundred and fifty people that he had in Mecca. Those five hundred, six hundred people that he had in Al-Ahzab. It was just those few hundred that he knew the reality of the world would change. That he knew the investment in them, the charity, the money, the effort, the time, the energy. And these people would change the landscape of the world. It's his sunnah sallallahu It's his methodology. It was the way that he saw how to make the most impactful change possible. So what about us? What about me and you? What about how do we maximize our efforts? Again, we want to make change. Either we can do it physically, give time, give effort, give our energy, or we can do it, whatever source Allah has given us, through charity, money, riches, or whatever Allah has blessed us with, but how do we maximize that? SubhanAllah, so many people, they come up and say it's a personal philosophy, and of course I'm not diminishing anybody, but we have, SubhanAllah, so many organizations, may Allah continue to bless them and aid them, but so many people, they come up and they say, please help me eat, or please help so-and-so eat. Many organizations or people or, or entities, they come up and they say, please, can you help us? There's injustice against this person. Can we please try to raise some money and help this person or that person. How many times do we hear, let's, let's, go, let's get together and please let's open this building or this masjid. Let's just open it. We need a new masjid, we need a new building, we need a new musallah. Please help us, invest in it. And of course all of those are absolutely correct. We should definitely invest time in feeding and helping people. We should definitely invest time in spending for masajid and opening of buildings and schools and we should definitely invest time in social justice work. We should definitely invest time and money in, in those things. But how do you change all of them? How do I help all of them? Is it just teaching, giving food to people so that they eat but not teaching them how to feed themselves? Is it just opening a building? without having anything going on in the building? Is it just that we have schools and people learn? Or kids learn, and then they don't do anything with all those things that they learned? No reciprocation? See, how do you invest and maximize your investment? It is investing in the building of people. Investing in the building of the youth. Investing in the building of the next generation, or the current generation, or people that will carry the mission forward the people that will not give food for people to eat but they will teach and train them and make them not under the circumstances that they need to ask for food or those that will not just have buildings open but we will invest in building the people in those buildings for wallahi i swear to you if we were to transplant transplant is a bad word if we were to transport the masjid of the prophet in medina to any city in dallas irving valley ranch richardson murphy i don't care where you put it with all of the amazing architecture that we have, would anyone go pray in the masjid without the Prophet and the companions? But would anybody go pray in that masjid that had no roof, that had no carpet, that had no lights, that had no heat or AC? Would anyone dare to go there for Salat al Fajr or Isha or attend the halaqa and sit in dirt or mud or sand, have rain fall on his head? Nobody would do such a thing. But it wasn't the it wasn't the architecture that made the message of the Prophet so impactful. It was those amazing people that he built. And so, today, inshallah ta'ala, my personal, my personal mission in life, you could say, is this investment. This building, of course a beautiful building, but the mission of this building is this investment. The mission of this organization is this investment that we don't invest just in the brick and mortar but that we invest in the building of people and specifically here the building of the younger generation the building of young men and young women the building of our children and their children and the future of our generations because these, these young men and women they are the 
heart of this ummah. They are what keeps us going in our, what is our future. And so investing in them. Of course, Allah, you see, we can see that we lose our youth very quickly. There was just an article that I shared the other day on social media of a young woman that left Islam and she wrote, I believe it was in the Washington Post, how Islam was so backwards and she didn't understand it. And she just had to leave Islam. And she found herself. How many of our youngsters are leaving the faith? Questions in the faith, doubts in the faith. And you know, with validity, for true, for true, because whether they're at school or at work or doubts that they have or unanswered questions, it happens. How many people have drug issues? Well, I mean, we're not talking about youth that have issues like just, you know, smoking cigarettes or even we people that have addiction problems to prescription drugs or heroin or things that are much worse. How do we hold or preserve or help our youth when they have depression issues or suicide issues or a couple of youth that I dealt with once that they were two girls that went to an Islamic school yet they created a gay club at their college even after they graduated an Islamic school how do we understand how do, we, how do you help your son, your daughter my son, my daughter when they, they have so much potential but they're so addicted to movies or music they're, such, they're wasting their energy, they're wasting their effort. They're just, I can't, I can't do. How many fathers and mothers come to say, I, can't, I don't know what to do with my son. I don't know what to do. He can be president, he can be this, he can be that. But he just sleeps all day. He hangs out with his friends too much. He just eats all day. What do I do? What do we do? How do we change the circumstance of young people? Well, it's very simple. And I'll end with these three very important things that we intend in in this place for our future to invest in. How do you build young people? Number one, you build a great culture for them. A place or an area where they feel like they're wanted. Like somebody cares for them. Like they feel that it's full of mercy. It's full of care. It's full of compassion. It's full of energy. It's full of life. It's fun. It's energetic. It's exciting. You have to build a great culture. Build a great environment that fosters the care of young people. But not, you don't stop there, you then you have to grow them. It's not just having fertile soil, you have to grow them. So how do you grow them? You build values and morals. You give them and allow them to, exonor, to show their skills and change their interests and have such amazing dynamic abilities harbored in their faith and in their hearts and in their minds. Then you allow them to grow and nurture and come up until they inspire a movement. We don't need Muslims, just young Muslims. Alhamdulillah, it's great that we have many Muslims in Masajid, but we didn't need all the Muslims in Masajid. We don't need all the Muslim youth sitting around in the Masajid just reading Quran. MashaAllah, this is the most amazing Masjid. The entire, the entire Masjid is filled with you just reading Quran. That's great. But we need to inspire a movement young people that will change the dynamics of Austin. If you didn't see yesterday on the news, a woman that picked up the mic as Muslims were having their Muslim capital day in Austin, and she said, Islam will not be allowed in America. Well, how do we react? Do we hit, fight, punch, or do we build young youth that will represent us on Capitol Hill? that will change the social dynamics of the community that we live in, that will go into finances, that will fix their businesses, that will be truthful and honest in their dealings, that will be doctors and engineers and mayors and lawyers. You have to inspire a movement. You have to be complete in where they go and the things that they can do and the skills that they can build and the people that they can meet. It's inspiring a movement, not just being in a place or a circumstance. It's the change that they can make. And it's that change, subhanAllah, this culture, those people, that movement that maximizes the effect and the change in the world. It's that movement. And so my pitch to you today, this whole thing was just a pitch, so that you can maximize your charity. In this movement, in, this, in, the, in those people, in this culture that will, inshallah ta'ala, reap the most rewards, not only for you in al akhirah inshallah, but also reap the most rewards in the world that we live in today. And that, my brothers and sisters, is the investment and the call of this center and the mission of this place. And we ask you to invest in that. I know it's not as elaborate, it's not as nice, 
a building, beautiful library, beautiful masjid, beautiful masala, beautiful machinery, 